Hello everybody, Ashley Norman here, live for Oligo Professional. I'm excited to bring you a little behind the scenes on my recent, check this out guys. If you haven't got a chance, you need to get one of these. This is a very special box that includes free education from yours truly, Ashley Norman here. So I'm excited because I'm actually gonna do a mini class based off of the online education that I have free with this kit, and it's going to be an Oligo Blacklight cocktail class. Sounds exciting, right? Okay, so I wanted to share a little bit of love here about the Oligo Blacklight Lightener line and why I love it so much. Well. Number one, it doesn't just have one lightener that's a hero lightener. It actually has four. So we're gonna go over the four different types of lighteners and what each type of lightener is great for. But friends, but the amazing, amazing thing is, is they're all able to cocktail together. So you can actually intermix the entire black light lightener line. So let's start. We're gonna go ahead and talk about our most gentle lightener type first within the black light lightener range. And that is our, here it is over here. <laughs> This right here is the clay base lightener. Now I was already having a mixing party, so as you can see, we're getting a little crazy. This is the clay balayage lightener. Now this one obviously has that clay base, which is really great for open air painting. And I am gonna show you one open air painting on a mannequin right now to show you how I apply this. Now the amazing thing about this is that it's still also very gentle and it can be used inside of foil if you're looking to create lift on let's say at levels age that just needs to be buffed up a little bit without damage this is another good option even inside of foil now this can be intermixed with some of the other powders if you want it to be stronger or have more cold tone so i'll show you what i mean by that the next lightener in our lane range that's still gentle but a little bit more aggressive than our clay lightener is going to be this oil-based lightener now this oil-based lightener is really my favorite and this does not exist in other brands this is insane this stuff it's liquid gold literally so if you can see it's so oily, you can actually pour it out. That's how oily this product is. But once you mix it with the peroxide, it thickens up enough that you can foil with it without it slipping. So if you mix that one, I'll show you what it looks like inside the bowl. This is mixed one-to-one -one with peroxide. So you can see once you mix it, it's obviously a lot thicker and it's not gonna necessarily slip outside your foil. So the mixing ratio with that one is one-to-one. -one. Now this oil-based lightener is amazing for three things in my opinion. Number one, great for on scalp. If you're doing a bleach retouch, this is fantastic. This is also good for the hairline. So a lot of us have very fragile, fine hairs around the face and bright money pieces are still on trend. So this is a really good one for foiling that money piece without creating damage. Another way I like to use this is on curlier textures. As we know, the coilier the hair, the more porous or open the cuticle layer could potentially be, and the easier it is to break down that curl pattern. So this one is also great on those curlier, tighter, porous, more fragile textures as well. These are, those are the three things I love using this for. Again, if you've got that level eight that just needs to be pushed a level or two without breaking, let's say previous light mids and ends, this is another one that's really great for that. Okay, moving on from there, the next lightener in the black light range is going to be your cool blonde. So this cool blonde one, I would probably say, is the one I use for most of my foil work. So the cool blonde, as you can see, has this cool tone to it. So it's going to have both blue and violet pigment in this lightener powder. So the cool thing about that, the cool thing about the cool blonde <laughs> is it does actually tone as it lifts. So a little fun story about this. I actually had a class once and we were in some venue and I had to buy some towels to use on the live models. And I, all I could find were these white towels from Walmart the night before this class that I was teaching. We used this lightener on those white towels and I laundered the white towels and they still had a blue and violet tint on the white. So the interesting thing about that, what that tells you is this blue powder actually is going to stain the hair. It's not gonna come rinsing out. So that's the nice thing about the pigments inside this bleach is it's not gonna come out in one wash, even in a towel that was used through an actual clothes, wa closing, clo clo clothes washer. Anyway, so this is amazing in terms of it does permanently stain the hair, but I've never had an issue with this actually turning the hair in unwanted blue or violet. So it's, it's pretty amazing. This is the one I use for most of my foil work and I'm gonna show you on a mannequin and the reasons why. The last powder that they have in the line is the extra okay so as you can see this powder is white all right now what's the difference between your cool blonde and your extra blonde 
Well, they're both powders, one being white and one being blue. So this one doesn't have that blue violet tint into it, but I will tell you, you can intermix these. Again, the, all this whole range is intermixable. So this is a cocktail class, right? So why would this be white? Well, some people prefer a bleach that doesn't have, excuse me, a lightener. We don't like to use that dirty word, right? Bleach, that's what you wash clothes with. Lightener is what we use on our clients, right? So why would you have a lightener that has a white powder? Well, some people like to have the white powder because it doesn't trick their eye when they're going to check their foils. So sometimes the blue powder, if you haven't trained your eye, then you could think that the foil is ready to be pulled when actually it's not ready yet. Whereas with a white powder, it's easier to see the level of lift inside the foil before you go and rinse it. The nice thing about this powder though is it is stronger. So even though it doesn't have the blue and violet pigments in this one, this one's actually stronger lift, which means it's a little bit more aggressive than your cool blonde. So I like this one for teasy lights because teasy lights are usually more hair inside of a packet than a typical highlight. So we're gonna show you that on a mannequin as well because saturation is a factor of lift and saturation is affected by your section size. Section size usually has to do with your technique. If you're doing thin slices, thin slices and weaves, that's gonna be a traditional highlight. If you're doing big panels or even big triangular sections and teasing that and creating a teasy light for ombre or graduation of color, that's when you're gonna grab for those stronger lightener types. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and show the clay lightener on our mannequin over here. So we can check this out. We got our little friend here. Now this is the clay lightener mixed up in a bowl. As you can see, it's really creamy and has a tendency to be on the thicker side. The reason why is because you need this product to sit on the top layer of the hair if you're painting open hair. So you don't want this to be runny because if it's runny, it's gonna run through that balayage section. So if you mix, personally, the way I like to mix this clay, I will take the clay and I will mix, let's say 75 cents, okay? So we're trying to make a dollar or one ounce, let's say for example. So what I'll do is 0.75 on the scale in ounces. I prefer to mix in ounces. If you do it in grams, it might be a little different. So 0.75 and then I do 0.25 of the cool blonde. So I'll intermix the clay and the cool. This is my favorite combo or cocktail of these two lighteners. So that's going to be 75% to 25% or three quarters to one quarter. So in my case, 0.75 ounce of the clay to 0.25 of the cool blonde. So that would make one ounce of powder and then I put two ounces of peroxide. So when it comes to the clay, you need to use one to two. So one part powder to two parts peroxide because it is thicker. If you mix this one to one, it'll be too thick. You won't be able to move it. So one to two is my personal favorite mixing ratio with the clay lighter, okay? So that's what this is right here, okay? So this is gonna be, this is three fourths of the clay, one fourth of the cool, that's my favorite cocktail, mixed one to two with our peroxide, okay? And our peroxide that we're using or developer is our Black Light Smart Developer. This one is really nice because it helps support the bonds of the hair during the lightening process. I do notice a big difference if I mix a different brand or a different type of developer with my Black Light. I highly recommend using the Black Light developers with the Black Light lighteners to get the best results. All right, so one part powder, two parts, the smart bonding developer. So let's go ahead and show this on our mannequin. Now, not all of you are going to use a balayage board. In my case, I prefer it. So this helps me control the amount of lightener that's on my brush during the application. I'll show you why. So if I take a scoop of lightener, what I don't wanna do is throw this onto the hair because this is not controlled. What I like today to, to do is put this on my board first, scrape that off, clean up my brush. That way I can control the amount of product that I'm picking up off the board instead of just dipping my bowl, my bowl, dipping my brush directly into my bowl. All right, guys, little tongue tied here this morning. How's everyone doing? For me, it's still in the morning time here on the West Coast. It might be a little bit later in the afternoon if you're on the East Coast. All right, so now you can see how I created that amount of product on the board and then I took the amount that I wanted. So kind of like that toothpaste commercial pickup. So now that I have control with the amount of lightener on my brush, I'll come in typically with a triangular pickup. The reason that open air painting 
is done on a triangle is for a couple of reasons. For one, if you have a triangle, this allows you to paint on the top surface without it bleeding through the section. But number two, if you have a top surface of blonde that sits over depth through zones one and two, when you curl it, that built-in low light pops out to create that chocolate and vanilla swirl. Then you can fully saturate the ends, which is the zone three. So again, with open air painting, you're going to create a top surface paint through zones one and two, an internal pocket of depth through zones one and two, and then a fully tipped out ombre in the zone three. I like to start applying my lightener in the mid length first in the zone two, because that way I start to drop off the product in the mid length to create what I consider a dry brush. So once you drop off your product in the zone two, technically your brush is now dry. With a dry brush, that's how you can create that feathered application toward the scalp area. So essentially drop that product off in the mid shaft and then work it up in the direction of the growth of the hair or of the cuticle of the hair. That way you're not working against the cuticle and you can create more of a feathered application by stretching the product up toward the root area without taking a glob of lightener and then putting it where you want more of a feathered saturation here, right? So drop off that amount of product there and then tap it or sweep it up toward the root area. So this would be a considered a double point balayage. So points on either side to create a V or a double point. If you came through the middle, that's consider considered a triple point or a W. The more points you do, the more blonde you're gonna see through the top area, but the less dimension that you're gonna create. So if you want a single point, double point, that's gonna leave a little bit more dimension towards the roots. If you come in here and just dry brush all the way across, this is gonna create a lot more diffusion and impact of blonde toward the scalp area, okay? So now I'm gonna lay the board down just in that zone three. That way the pressure of the board allows me to fully saturate for that bright ombre. But what I'm not doing is smashing down the mid length of the hair because that would create a blorange transition. So the most important thing here with that open air balayage is making sure the transition in that zone two area is also seamless. So sometimes I like to check here and just kind of do one of those and then you're good to go, okay? Obviously, you wouldn't touch this above here, right? This is demonstration purposes only. Okay, so that was your clay lightener mixed three-fourths clay to one-fourth cool tone, one part power powder to two parts developer, okay? That's my favorite within that combination or cocktail of the black light lightener, okay? Now let's talk about, let's go into this, is our oil-based lightener. So the lightening cream, again, this is liquid gold, guys. I really, really, really love this for the hairline because the hairline is always the most sensitive hair or previously lightened mids and ends or on scalp if I'm doing a lightener retouch, okay? So let's show a couple foils around the face. Quickly too, when would you use an open air technique versus a foilage technique? depends on what level of lift you're trying to achieve. So if you have someone who is, let's say for example, levels six and above, and you're looking for three or four levels of lift, this open air painting, especially with that cool blonde mixed in there, is gonna get you there. The time that I wouldn't necessarily use this technique and this cocktail is working on levels four and below that are coarser textures. So I've got coarse, dense, thick, dark natural levels four and below, I'm probably not gonna go for the clay open air unless I'm looking for a warmer result because of how much exposed contributing pigment is down at those darker levels. So you are going to, be able, going to need to be able to recreate this inside a foil. So I'm gonna show you how to translate inside a foil and what cocktails and lighteners I would use for that situation. So the nice thing about all of this is that not all lighteners are for everything. People say, oh, what's your favorite lighter? It's like, well, that's kind of a trick question because some lighteners are meant for certain techniques and some lighteners are meant for other techniques or different hair types, right? So it depends on what it is that I'm trying to create, depends on which lightener I'm gonna choose. So if we have the hairline, I'm gonna go in with my lightening cream. So here is a couple foils that I would create around the hairline. Let's say I'm going in for a money piece. The money piece I think should be the strongest 
from the center of the middle part, no matter how she parts it. Because if you create a thick ribbon here, no matter how she wears it, at least it's gonna create balance. Sometimes if you try to go in and create a thick ribbon where they're really kind of shallow in here, it can make them so blonde, it almost blends into their scalp where they're more shallow and makes it look like a bald patch. So I don't like to do a big thick money piece, even if they're a heavy side parter, from the side part. I like to keep it through the middle. Okay, so if I start a money piece through the middle, I'm gonna start on a diagonal back to keep it organic. And what I like to do is take a slice. You can come in and create an even weave in the slice. So if I, let's say, take a comb that creates a weave for me, this is the triple threat comb. I actually designed this with pink pewter. So see how right now I have an even split or an even amount of hair on either side here. I like to come back and grab that front corner and get more of the hair at the front of the hairline and less hair toward the back. So you can see I've got a chunkier weave at the front and a finer weave toward the back. To me, that creates more of an organic placement. So if I come in here, you can see the chunk there and the finer weave from behind. I'm using the oil-based lightener, which is extremely gentle and very hydrating. So great for this fragile area around the face. The mixing ratio for this is one to one. So one part cream lightener to one part developer. Now I like to use a spatula when I'm mixing this product. So remember I was showing you how this product kind of like pours out of the jar. So because it's so liquid, sometimes it's hard to manage. I like to scoop this out with a spatula to determine how much of this I'm gonna mix. That's the best way to mix this lightener is with one of these guys, okay? So you can buy a spatula, you know, doesn't have to be one that's specifically for doing hair. You can literally just go to Target and get one in the cooking aisle. So I'll fold and then fold, come underneath, flip this lip in, just tuck it so it's a little tighter. That way you don't get that slippage or bleed mark around the face. I like to fold past my foil here and then lock this corner back so it's a little bit tighter and I can flip this around without pulling my foil out. So if I flip that up, then what I'll do when I start my next one around the money piece is I'll section out a pocket of depth behind the hairline. So I'll come here at a diagonal, section out a pocket of depth that's behind the hairline, clip that up. So you can see right here that the depth doesn't go all the way to the hairline. It's behind where the skin is. So then if I come here again and pick up the next corner, you can see that this corner is gonna connect to that corner there. So coming in, creating that even weave, splitting the hair so that there's an even distribution of hair on either side, but then coming back and grabbing that front corner so I get a bolder ribbon right here around the skin, okay? So put this inside a foil, still working with the cream liner, one to one. Now I like to use it even with 10 volume around the hairline typically because it's going to lift and if anything, I would rather let it sit on the hair a little longer than try to use something that's more aggressive and end up with damage around the face. There's nothing worse than breaking hairs right around their face where they see it the most. So in my opinion, I would rather work slow than try and work fast and potentially create damage. So the cream-based lightener, one-to-one -one with 10 volume is my go-to around the face. So I would continue this technique. I call this the hashtag hairline shuffle. And this technique is fully shown on that free class I was telling you about in that box with Oligo. So I would continue flipping these up and sectioning out a pocket of depth behind the positive highlight toward the face. So I would continue following this all the way down to in front of the ear. So let's pretend that I did that. Then what I would typically do to create, you know that money piece that's really skinny at the root and then all of a sudden gets wide? Or let's, let's imagine, for example, you've got that curtain fringe and you see this like skinny little highlight here and then this wide kind of ombre toasted edges of the petal. So if you wanna create that money piece that goes skinny to wide following the crest of a round shape of a curtain fringe or a round layer, what you need to do is ombre the money piece. So if you take the leave outs that you left and you over direct them forward in between all the highlights that skim the natural hairline like so. So over direction forward 
creates round shape. We know this, right? So if I take this hair, over direct it and cut it here, we know it's going to then fall from high to low from front to back at a diagonal. You see that? So that creates high to low from front to back or round. So over direction forward in both haircut and color creates round shape. So if I want ombre that crests high to low from front to back, I have to take the leave outs in between the money piece and over direct them forward, tease and tip that out to create that crest or ombre toasted edge of the petal. All right, so those are some techniques around the face. Let's talk quickly about the other two lightener types. So we just were saying earlier, when would you use the clay open air, for example, and when would you want to recreate a similar technique or placement, but inside a foil? Well, levels of lift is definitely gonna come into play. So we are talking about having someone with a darker natural base. So again, if we have someone who is a darker natural base and they want to see four levels or more of lift in one process, you're probably going to have to put that inside a foil because incubation is a factor of lift. So I love doing this open air painting for more of a soft lift technique, three to four levels on lighter natural levels or finer hair textures. If I'm looking for a cooler result, you can obviously do this on darker, coarser hair if you're looking for a warmer result. If, you, if this client here though wants a cooler result, then you are going to have to recreate a similar placement of this open air balayage, but inside a foil. So we were talking about how this open air balayage has a top surface of blonde with a built in low light through the zones one and two. So when I curl that, that underbelly of depth comes out and then it leads into this fully tipped out ombre end. So you can see how this creates that chocolate and vanilla swirl effect which is what we love to see on Instagram is those curled ribbons of balayage, right? So how do we create this skimming of blonde that twists into a pocket of depth and then into a fully ombre end inside a foil? So let's recreate a triangle. So we painted on a triangle to create that placement effect. So here's our triangle. Because we're gonna put this into foil, we can't take this whole triangle and do one foil we have to break it down into multiple foils. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna skim off the top surface of the triangle and put this inside the foil to recreate the surface painting. Then with this one, we're gonna leave that underbelly of depth in the zone one and two and just tip out the zone three for the ends. So we're gonna recreate one open air balayage painted triangle into, into two foils, one and then two, all right? So in this first foil, we just wanna create a surface painted effect. So maybe we do a tease at let's say 50% or halfway down the hair. So flick, flick at the 50% mark or halfway down the hair and then push the tease to the scalp cleanly, tighten to the root. Now that already is going to create a thinner surface paint. If the hair is very dense, you also might need to weave. So 50% tease and weave to recreate a top surface, all right? If I put this inside a foil, you can clearly see that this hair is pretty thin. So it's not a lot of hair inside a foil, it's pretty thin. And so we were talking about the amount of hair that goes inside the foil determines the saturation level. Saturation is a factor of lift. If you have thick packets of hair inside a foil, it's gonna take longer to lift than a thinner section inside a foil. We already know that, right? So in this case, with the thinner pickup, I am going to be working with this cool blonde lightener. So the cool blonde lightener is our more gentle powder lightener in comparison to the extra blonde, okay? So here is our cool blonde mixed one to one. So one part powder to one part smart developer. I drop it off in that zone two first. That way the hair is stuck into the foil. I can come in and lock this triple threat comb. I call it the triple threat comb because it tees teases, weaves, and locks. It's a comb that I created in collaboration with King Peter. I sell it on my website, as well as that level finder I was showing you earlier. And this thin foilage board is also another one of my custom tools. So we saturate our 50% tease and weave with the cool blonde lightener mixed one to one. All right, that's going to represent the top surface paint of our balayage triangle or foilage, balayage inside a foil, right? 
Next thing that we need to create is the underbelly of death as well as the ombre tip out. So if we come directly underneath that foil, find the rest of that triangle. Now I wanna leave the dimensions in zone one and two and just tip out that zone three like we did in that open air piece. So now what I'm gonna do here is flick and flick at 75%. So now I'm teasing lower to leave more depth toward the root area that doesn't need to go tight to the scalp now because I'm not going to push this tight to the scalp. Now, again, saturation is a factor of lift inside a foil. This is a much bigger section or there's more hair in this pickup than the top surface one. Because there's more hair in the ombre tip out than the top surface painting, I have to switch up my lighter type. So now I'm using the extra blonde. So the extra blonde is the stronger powder within the black light line. So you can see here, this is what that looks like. As you can see, it's a white powder versus a cool tone powder. Again, if you want, you can intermix this. So let's say I wanted to create a stronger lightener type like the extra blonde that has that cool toning ability like the cool blonde, then mix the cool and the extra together. There, boom. There's a whole nother cocktail for you. So really the thing that is so amazing about this Oligo line is its versatility to cocktail and create any lightener. Once you have that knowledge of what each lightener does and why and when you would use it, then you can create any cocktail imaginable depending on the situation and what you need it for. So really it gives a power back to you rather than a one type of lightener fits all situations. That's not how it works, right? So just like learning how to mix color to get together and cocktail different of your favorite colors is the same thing, only this range gives you that ability with their lighteners as well. So here we go, here's that top surface. If we marry that with that underbelly of depth and the ombre tip out, you can now see here what we've created is a similar effect to an open air balayage only inside of foil. And we only use two foils for one big triangular section which is ideal because you could think of maybe an open air balayage pattern is typically brick layered triangles. So now you could do a brick layered triangle, triangular placement like you would open air painting, only instead of doing everything open air, you just do two foils per triangle, changing your lightener type to compensate for the amount of hair in the foils. You see that? So this was the open air lightener with the clay. This is the foilage technique. That was two foils, cool blonde on the top surface, extra blonde on the tip out to compensate for the saturation in the different techniques, creating the lift in both at the same time. And then we also did this section over here. We did two highlights around the face. This being tipped out over directed forward, again, it's gonna drop. So you're gonna create a high low slant or round ombre shape with the highlights in between. So you can almost think of this as like these highlights are the veins in the leaf and then the ombre is like the toasted edges of the petal around the face here. So here's the veins in the leaf. This is that over-directed ombre that falls at a diagonal back slant to create that beautiful skinny money piece to the root that gets wider through the front face frame. Okay, so... <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this mini lecture. Again, all this really was to go over the different four lightener types within the black light lightener range, my personal favorite cocktails and mixing ratios, and the techniques in which I utilize these different cocktails. So if you enjoyed this short little mini lecture, let me tell you friends, I recorded so much, everything start to finish, including these techniques in full for an online class for Oligo. So this is the box that we collaborated on. You can see back here. There's me. <laughs> so if you get this box, it includes all the products, the top products that I typically love to use, including my gloss shades here, and then includes the free class going over all the techniques on how to utilize this. All right, friends, thank you so much for having me. Ashley Norman here for Oligo Professional.